Brad Mullet Adventures. Come with me, we're gonna head out west. We're gonna head out to the country. Then tomorrow, let's get the boat and go fishing in the open sea. Uh, grab your gear and meet me here. Bring the whole family team. Mad Mullet Adventures team. Mad Mullet Adventures team. Mad Mullet Adventures team. Mad Mullet Adventures. Guys, that's three deer. Alright guys, well, uh, these are two out of the three I've uh, retrieved so far. I'm not going to show you the wounds, I'm not all about the gore factor. But, um, you've seen, I don't know whether you've seen on camera the first two go down, you definitely did see the third one go down, they're all clean, uh, swift kills. Uh, the old Tika 270 with Schwalski's uh, Z6 scope, unreal combination for, for deer and uh, pigs and whatnot. Uh, we're going to head back to camp now once I've uh, got that last deer, drop the guts out and start breaking them down. Alrighty, um, I don't know whether you've seen the last episode I did on, on the goat. Well, same concept. So they've got the tissue membrane between the skin and the meat. So we're just going to run the knife up between the skin and the meat. Like so. And as you can see, it actually is quite easy to pull away. So I'm going to ring bark this now and start 
cutting the skin off the leg. What's up, Dylan? Um, uh, I'm hiding my jacket. You're hiding your jacket, are ya? Yeah. Do you want me to take your jacket off? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Lou, what are we cutting up? Deer. A deer. Yeah, you like eating deer, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when it comes to this Achilles tendon? Like I said, do not cut it. Because the deer will all of a sudden just fall. And you don't want that, especially when you're holding a knife. Because it can, if you hold the knife incorrectly, it can drive the knife into your sternum, your arm. Repeat to both sides, just slowly bringing that uh, skin down. And as you go, you can give her a bit of a pull as well. Like so. And don't forget you got your tailbone in here. So you won't be able to pull that through. You just have to get a joint. Oh, my hands are cold. This morning it's negative two. And uh, we've got the cold room set to four degrees, which is quite a bit warmer, but because the air is a lot colder outside, it's freezing my fingers. Alright. So what I'm going to do, like I've actually um, brought the skin back down to about where I want. I'm going to cut this skin away so I can show you guys a bit better when it comes to this shoulder section. Um, the shoulder section, it is quite easy to uh, come into the seam on the side here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring it down across the back and work from top of the back to the front of the blade. Now you can see that tissue line starting to show up there. When you're coming from the other way, that tissue line is the one that's quite easily to get from the opposite direction. So I've come down the shank here, opening it up, and just go around the shank. Mainly use the tip of your knife when you're working. into the chest cavity Okay, as you can see, I've opened up the shoulder, opened up the neck, and now you just have to do the exact same thing to the other side, and uh, always just follow your, uh, your tissue lines. Just remember, when coming into this section, if I pull this apart a little bit, you'll see what I mean. When you're coming down here, it's very easy to come into that tissue line and actually take the shoulder off and the shoulder off the shoulder will be off before you even know it. Done both sides. We're now coming down to the neck. And just like 
anywhere else. Just follow that tissue line. Okay. That just about does it. I'm just going to get my hacksaw. Cut through. bin. Alrighty, so uh, next step what we'll do is I'll um, put this on the bench and actually show you how we break it down into um, our quarters or I should say thirds. So next step what we're going to do is remove the hocks basically. So what I do through the Achilles tendon, if you don't have a, uh, a hacksaw Let's do this first one with a hacksaw. What you have to do, you have to find your joint. Which the best way to explain it is like that. That's what a basically a joint is all about. And uh, what you have to do is you have to try and get the tip of your knife over those joints. So just taking a bit of the hair away right from this joint here. So what I'm gonna do is get that Achilles tendon so you can see where the joint basically is so you want to try and find that joint with the tip of your knife basically come in the back what you can do is score across where you think that joint is just in here yep and next step, what you can do if you really want to is seeing you've scored it, make sure you go all the way around, is put exactly on the edge of the bed, bench and throw like that. And just like I was saying, just like that, that's how the joints are. That's the easiest way to go through a joint without sitting there trying to cut through it. So we'll just finish finish this off. Hey daddy. Hey darling girl. On a foot. I'll put him in the bin for me. Good girl. You wanna help dad? Yeah? What's that? It's a bit of meat. Come help dad. Oh my daughter's been around this since she was oh, basically six weeks of age. She's been coming out in the bush and enjoying the bush, haven't you? Yeah, you've got your own knife, haven't you? Yeah. What colour is it? Black. It's black, is it? I thought it was pink. Pink. Is this your knife? That's your knife, isn't it? Yeah. And we have to be very careful when we're cutting, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we cut. No, no. <laughs> we just don't cut randomly. So, it's a hole. it is a hole now, isn't it? I did that. Yeah, you did. So, this, that's my knife. it is your knife. You're a good help, aren't you? So what we'll do, push this up a bit. I did that hole. Yeah. Who, um, who did that big hole? This, that's where the guts were. Oh, where is the guts? We threw it in the bin. No. no, not this trip, when we're out in the paddock. Oh. Is guts yucky? But what happens with guts? It washes off. It, yeah, it washes off very See good. See this? Yeah. That, that washes away. That does wash away. It's a very good high five to that. Yeah. Before I get too far into it, um, I better remember how to show you guys how to extract the, the best uh, part of the, the animal, which is the eye fillets. And uh, they actually run on the inside here. Let's get this out of the way. They actually run on the inside, so they start, get your very tail here, and they actually run up into the leg. So what we're gonna do, get this 
scoot out of the way a bit is I'm going to come down hard on the backbone like so and once you get a certain distance like when you start to hit the ribs you should be able to work your finger under it and it should just pop away from the bone come around the back side of it and just slowly work um, I do apologise for the light like every muscle it's got its own tissue line as well just work right up to the top here we get into the top of the leg roll it out and you got the exact same on the other side so I'll just get that off there that is your eye fillet now uh, in your butcheries you're paying well over hundred dollars a kilo for your eye fillet so you know be careful when you take that one out. I'll go ahead and do the other one. Now we've got the eye fillets out. We're going to take both the back legs off at once. So what we want to do is where the spine comes through and starts curling into your, your um, basic hip bones and goes out to your tailbone. Right on this joint here is the one we want to cut through. So uh, we make a cut through that one and you can see where your, your muscle stops here. So cut dead straight through there and exact same on the other side. You can see how your muscle stops here, cut dead straight through there. Now I'm one joint too low, that's okay. Just come up your one joint. Come up your one joint. I was one joint too low. Your legs removed. What we're going to do now is come straight down the middle of this between the two legs, between the two butt legs. Straight through. And you'll come to a bone. Come around the corner of that bone. You can use a bit of force and you'll, you'll hit a joint very soon. As you'll see the joint here. In the knife and a half moon shape to open up that joint. Come through that joint. Let's follow this bone. Tip your knife. Under the joint, and now it, it curves around a little bit. So just try and use a tip of your knife only so you can keep in touch with that bone the whole time. If you use too much of the knife you can lose touch with the bone. Just like filleting a fish. You have to feel 
that bone on tip of your knife at all times. Okay, it's just about to come free. That's separated now and basically you do the exact same thing to the other side to get that hip bone out. So I'll explain very briefly your different cuts but I'll show you how to extract them on another episode. So you got the outside of the leg is here. Put it flat on the table with your hot pointing upwards, get this bit of meat out of the way. If you can see this bit of meat here, it's a half moon shape. This is what the actual top side is. This section here. This section here is your round. From your knuckle down, that's your rump steak. And on the back side here, that's actually your silver side. And like I said, I'll show you how to extract your different cuts in another episode. What I'll do... When I was a butcher, um, my boss, when I was doing an apprenticeship, got me to eat the raw meat. I wasn't a fan of it at first. But um, I'm actually quite fond of it now, especially if you get it fresh, you mince it up, you put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of onion with it, and that's your tartar, like your beef tartar, your pork tartar. And uh, I'm quite fond of uh, the venison as well. Um, it, it's a different taste. It's not disgusting, believe me. It's all mind over matter. Um, if you're ever doing it, I uh, suggest you, you give it a go. You won't, won't get sick as long as you've looked after the meat properly. So that's our two legs done. I will knock these hocks off. You can do the same thing uh, with the joints, but I find it's just as easy doing it with a saw. Now, depending on what you want to do here, um, it's depending on how you, you break this down. Now, you can either cut it straight through, like that, all the way through, right through the rib cage, through the backbone, then cut the neck off, and then split this in half again, and if you've got a band saw, put it through the band saw and make your four quarter chops, or you can turn this into a roast. Now, I reckon it's just easy at this stage to take the shoulders off and turn them into roasts. So, before you would have heard about me talking about that tissue brain membrane under the arm. So, very easy one to follow this one. Cut through that first little bit of meat. And as you see, that's all tissue there. And as I pull, that really exposes the tissue and shows you what goes on in there. So just nick this tissue through and you'll eventually get to the blade, the very tip of the blade. And all you have to do is keep following this exact line until you pop out the other side and cut it all the way through. So there's one shoulder, do the exact same thing to the other side. Sorry about my hands again. So 
for that other shoulder. Now you're basically left with the trunk and neck. Um, I'm going, not going to show you how to remove the back strap straight away because I want to try and get this neck out of the way so it's not such a big bulky piece of meat to try and work around for you guys. So basically where the neck finishes curling around, which is about there, you're going to cut straight through. You'll hit your brisket there and your backbone and just same on the other side. Now you're going to need your saw or a reciprocating saw for this or if you've got a band saw it just makes things a lot easier which we have but not everyone has a band saw so what you call your, your brisket. That's your brisket in front of there which is your breast. Cut through your backbone. Now we're left with what I consider the second best cut. Now if you're going from neck to uh, rear of the, the animal, your first section here until the ribs finish, so that's your last rib there, I'll just make a little tiny cut because I want to, so this section here is actually called your rib fillet. From here back, that's actually your porterhouse or sirloin. So what we want to do is, once again, hard on the bone, exactly like the goat episode. So hard on the backbone, run up beside the backbone. Sweet knives. Do the exact same thing the other side. Using basically your first third of the knife. When you get down to the uh, base of the backbone where it starts curling around to your ribs, so you need to grab your muscle lever it out a bit, use your tip of your knife and work your way up to get that meat off the back of the backbone, uh, back of the rib, sorry. And you see that starting to roll out nicely there. You get to a certain point, like this here, this tissue line starting to open up. That's as far as you have to go. So then, all we have to do is basically cut your back strap out, which consists of your rib fillet porterhouse. There you go. That there is an absolute magnificent bit of meat. So what I suggest you do with the eye fillet and the uh, backstrap, if you can, is get down to your local Audi or Kmart or four wheel drive supercenter, wherever or whoever stocks vacuum pack machines and actually vacuum pack these. If you've got a beer fridge, perfect because um, what you need to do once you vacuum pack these is put them in your fridge 
it has to be between one and four degrees and it can't vary too much. Your standard fridge you're always opening and shutting it and the temperature varies too much. If you've got a beer fridge or a fridge you can just put your meat in and rest. I like to rest for absolute minimum of two weeks. That's in the fridge between one and four degrees with a non-variation in temperature and let that muscle relax. You may think this is dead and it's relaxed, but it's not. This is what, what you call aging meat. So I actually like to do it for about a month, but try two weeks in your fridge first and just see what happens there. So we're gonna extract the next back strap. I'll do this a little bit quicker. So that's the next one. Trim it up a bit. There we go. So uh, that's how you, you break a body down the easiest and simplest way if you're in the field. Now, this is the quick easy, quick, easy way. There is a way of doing it. Everyone's got their own way, but that's the quick, easy way I found that is easiest to teach most people. So we've got rib fillets, porterhouse, you got your beautiful eye fillets, got two legs, got two shoulders, your neck, that's beautiful for slow cooking and especially in, in your rib cage, uh, that's, that's good for your slow cooking as well for um, all your stews and casseroles and that. Alright guys, hope these uh, few tips and tricks will help you uh, Build your confidence up and get out there and uh, hopefully bag your own deer. Just remember guys, this is our land, we need to protect it. Till next time, cheers and good luck.